Another tool that I use in the field a lot is rsync. It's similar to SCP, but it has some additional functionality. For example, you can incrementally copy files from one location to another. So you might copy a directory full of files, and then if you have three or four files that are added to that later, they can be incrementally copied to the remote source. You can use it to copy files locally, but most of the time I use it to copy remotely. And I use rsync a lot more than SCP. However, you need to make sure that it is installed on your system. And Debian by default does not have that installed. So we'll need to do that first, and then we'll run through a file copy with rsync. It's gonna work in essentially the same manner. You're gonna be pushing or pulling data just like we did with SCP. RSync works over SSH by default, but it doesn't have to. You can use Windows RM and other methods, but generally you'll use it over SSH. So let's take a look at our client here in the terminal and see if rsync is installed and we see the command is not found. So we're gonna have to grab that and install that on our Debian system. There we go, it grabs rsync 3.2.7. And you'll need rsync on both systems, the local system and the remote system, so the source and the destination. So we'll go over to our server and take a look at that. And I can tell you right now, it's not going to be installed. Debian server is very lightweight. They don't put many programs into it, so it's extremely lightweight and quick to start. But we'll install that now. There we go, and also 3.2.7, so that is good. Now we can run the rsync command on either of these systems, and you'll see that there's a whole ton of options and functionality with rsync. We're just gonna show the basics right here. So we'll go back to the client, and currently we're in the downloads directory, and we have our debian.iso file. That's the file I'm gonna copy over. So we'll do that with the rsync command, and quite often I'll use the dash A option, which is the archive option, and I use that most of the time. So we'll grab that debian.iso file, and then specify where we're going to store that. This works the same exact way as SCP. We need to know the user account at the target system and the IP address or the host name, and so this is the Debian server then a colon separating that username IP address from the path where we're going to store it, which is going to be slash home slash user. And we'll press enter. And we'll press enter. And that should copy over. Now you'll note, no news is good news, right? But we didn't see the progress for this. We'll show that in the next sub lesson. But this should have copied over. And let's take a look at the server side and run an LS. And once again, we have Debian.iso. We did remove all the files from there before. Really, it was just one file, and we removed that. So now we have Debian.iso once again. And if you want to do a pull of data, you could do that as well. It works in the same manner as SCP. We would just run this command. And instead of having the file first, our source would be the remote location. And then we could store that locally, either with a dot or in whatever directory we want or change the name. You can do that however you like. So that would be a pull of the information. So try testing rsync on your systems now. Remember that you may have to install it. It's a great program though, and I use it a lot in the field.